Hey folks, welcome to the Market Internal Review for September 8th, 2023. A little bit of a hiatus for me from YouTube this week. So we're going to go ahead and get started here. Almost no gap today. Five cents. It's not even really worth mentioning, although they can sometimes provide to the cent resistance and or support. So it bears mentioning in, in that regards. <laughs> and that's about it. Q, interestingly, had the exact same size gap, and we'll look at that in a moment. Mostly today, um, as I warned in my, my last published uh, market internal review video, that this week most likely was going to be uh, an odd one, given that it's a short week. I've never known them to be that great for the price action and the movement. Um, and I have no clue if it's because well, a lot of the algorithms that trade the market are not trained against four-day weeks or, or not. Uh, but for sure, this week was somewhat of a bear. We had a little bit of a smooth downside on Wednesday. This move here alone, I think, was about 3 bucks. Okay, 450 So that was a pretty good range. Um, and mostly smooth. Yesterday, Thursday was <laughs> really awful. We had a couple of bounces down here, traded within the gap. And leading us into today, we, we certainly are closing well below where we opened up. So Friday, we closed around 451 and we're at 445. So a lot of, a lot of downside move in the end, although really choppy for delivery. Today's open gave us quite the violence. We had a divergence about 30 minutes in, I don't know, less than 15 minutes into the market with the ad and vold and their trends are flipping around. Very little tick to go along with these huge engulf candles here. This one closed right at the second deviation high from Thursday's price uh, using the TWAP. And then we basically pocketed right in there for the rest of the morning session with no tick. You can see TWAP is uh, not really drawing anything. And when you see that, that's a good reason to just sit on your hands. <laughs> There's nothing to do. There's no real direction. There's no strength. A uh, good way to get chopped up. There was one interesting setup, and I'll show you here in a moment. But by and large... Until there's some strength in the market, it's best to, to wait. Let the structure materialize some kind of opportunity. And today, we really didn't see anything, save for a couple of small scalps. Look at, trend is nowhere to be found uh, at open. And though we do start to have some bullish tick uh, up here, it, it does create new highs, which is somewhat bullish. We don't have really anything to to target for profit at least utilizing TWAP and the market internals the mercy indicator is showing uh, you know extreme buy side strength and or overbought territory here so potentially expecting some downside but by this point where we start really coming up here i think a lot of traders might see a little bit of like a wedge kind of formation here I don't really trade those, but it's there. That's roughly where Ad and Vold are starting to align and we're going full bullish mode. However, notice no trend. Where's the, the trend signifying that we're at an imbalance ready for price discovery? And it's not there. And so you get this choppy kind of delivery here. There's really not much. Maybe this previous TWAP level. It's, it's just not a really good quality trade. So much of this day was garbage, and we finally start to have, by 11.30, a really strong seated balanced uh, indication from trend via the MIT indicator. We get one strong bear close here at 2.10. Really nasty engulf candle, and it just busts right through previous day high. We had been bouncing and fighting against that. We could not reclaim TWAP post 1230. And the, 
I don't know that I would even say that the daily gap is what saved us here, but that's certainly one thing that was here. Other than that, there's just really nothing. There's a first deviation T wall from yesterday. We really broke through that. We broke through a lot of structure. And it was just overall really, really dirty. <laughs> and that's what you can get with trend balance. Turning the tick levels on, I'm sure they're going to reveal a little bit more of the afternoon. Okay, they did pick up some of this. So actually these tick levels were, were pretty nice. But again, when you start seeing the trends on the price and volume flipping like this, that's just really, really nasty trading. Mercy is showing a downtrend. So is the average tick closures. So maybe you would have waited to try to short some of these tick level breakdowns. But I mean, you're scalping 50 cents. If you're doing futures, uh, bull bear ETF shares, trades, things of that kind, you know, maybe you could make something out of this, but I'm a little bit more choosy and I'd rather trade a quality market. Today definitely was not that. We'll go blast through the raw internals charts. So trend starting to show us that deviation here in the morning and we've seen the 200 trend down and typically when that occurs and we're starting to head into this area, it's more of a buy, but a lot of a lot of accumulation towards the downside, which this is inversely correlated. Volume showing much, pretty much a rise the whole time as we head into the end of this week of trading. So some pretty good setups here, but we get that knife. Let's see where it is around 210. Yeah, here it is. It actually sticks out like a sore thumb if I watch that. So we did end up finishing higher. And I don't know what extended hours would show. Yeah, we ran a little bit higher in extended hours. That last little four minutes they provide for some reason. Accumulation for tick. Very interesting setup here. Seeing that large arc as that morning. I'm not going to call it a rip, <laughs> but upwards move into the third deviation on standard T, uh, session TWAP. Then we see just basically from about 1130 all the way to the end of the day. Look at this noise. I've mentioned this in past videos how, and it always seems to coincide with some of the worst days to trade if you're a scalp kind of uh, opportunist. And the, you'll see these candles here at the end for tick are just absolutely nasty. That's complete balance as far as I'm concerned. Neither side is really making a statement. And finally, the ad for the day. Uh, this one here, we have an old level here, about 600 advancement, blasted right down towards zero line, and then sucked it right back up. And when we floated around there for much of the day until about that 12.30 time, there's that 210 dump. And we basically declined for the rest of the day. We went from a peak of about 750 in advance to only about 5 83 or sorry 583 decline ending in 174 advancement so essentially a balance the volume is the only thing that really gives me potentially some kind of <laughs> bias that maybe we'll see a small gap up but it's a weekend it's anybody's guess what's going to happen looking at vix we close back below 14 again and we're right under there, basically 1382. It might as well be 14. Multi time frame TWAP analysis. We're just going to look at the monthly. So that big run up we had, uh, well, <laughs> I don't want to call it a big run up because, um, I mean, overall, I, I guess you could call it a big run up. What was this? $2 move on SPY. You, you see, we had this dump here on the New York composite until about 948 now if we go look there's one there's one party member here that doesn't match the rest of the crew oh it's russell and <laughs> russ just slammed hard and fast right down the previous day low price of 183 that i was watching the whole time and i saw the pause here we got this cluster of candles on spy I'm looking at the queues pausing under this monthly TWAP level. I'm seeing the composite getting drugged down. The only thing that really gave me hesitation was the Dow. 
Dow's just hanging out by this piddly gap of eight cents, and but the Russ is just selling the whole time. I, uh, you know, I was looking for a little bit of a retracement back towards the gap, maybe a test of previous day high because we just ripped right through there on pretty much every index save for the Russ. And boy, I mean, we we did finally receive this knife. And then later in the day, after we bought it all back up, we did retest previous day's high. But, yeah, just such a nasty move. <laughs> Overall, if we look at the accumulation histograms for all the indices, you can see Dow did end up ending on the downside. So did SPY. I'm oh, sorry, not Dow, Q. Q ended up downside. So did SPY. Dow did not. And... The Russ definitely did. So the Russ finished uh, higher than previous day low that it tested early in the morning. But really nasty overall for the Russ today. Couldn't, uh, couldn't keep that gap after they filled it. Not a huge move down overall. 57 cents. Not much to write home about. As far as the SPY charts uh, sector analysis. So energy continuing to to thrust forward here and there's a handful of energy stocks you can go look at XLE holdings you can see them for yourself really doing tremendous and the rest of the the sectors per RSI are kind of just hanging out in the middle we had a really hard bounce um, on what is this XL I think XLU and that one's been coming up a little bit and the volume leaders I got to really shrink this in order to fit it on the screen. 40 mil for uh, finance. And I think that's really the biggest one to write home about. The rest of them are, yeah, XLU is, yeah, that's the one that's been coming up. So it's sitting at about 6 mil, 16 uh, mil rather, sorry. Now, as far as uh, this, this move here, so we did not hold 50% of this candle from August 29th that was that 446 level I mentioned in the last video that I wanted to have everybody be aware of not that you got to take my advice but I certainly watched it and you can see on Wednesday September 6th we actually closed right on it <laughs> right on that line coincided with the 10 day SMA and the 50 SMA basically right just right there and this line, I believe I had it somewhere about here. This is what I was looking for. And we didn't quite hold that. We and I was expecting that perhaps we'll come and test this weekly trend line. We'll see. There's a 20 SMA right below. We did come through it and then closed back. And today we, we closed above it, but we're still below the 50, the 10, the 5. Now, one thing to consider is all of these different moves that we've had in the past. So this one here from the from the bounce low, we're looking at about a $10 correction. Now, this big nasty one that we had, that's about a $26 buck, <laughs> buckaruno there. These other ones, though, about $12, $10, $13, 12 So we are within the standard recent anyways the standard correction move of about two and a half three percent i'll say now this guy here was almost six percent so about double the standard kind of move uh at least as of april 2023 so we'll see we we've got this structure to deal with if we can come back up we've got a handful of moving averages to uh to deal with looking at Something that gives me a little bit of hope is the top 100 stocks above their five-day average, their five-day SMA. So per the 30th, which I think was right here, no, right here, this last green day, the green closing day we had on SPY, that's when we were at our peak of about, what is that, 90%. So 90 stocks, the top 90 stocks out of the top 100 were above their five-day moving average. So 
they were cooking <laughs> quite a lot. And we maybe, maybe found a bottom on the 6th, Wednesday, where we had that 20 SMA tap directly on SPY. And you can see we started to curl up back on Thursday. And then today we closed even higher with almost 50% of uh, the top 100 stocks of the S&P closing ab uh, above their five-day average. So not too shabby. Might mean that we're not we're not uh, necessarily out of the hole yet, but hopefully we're we're looking better. And let's see here. So a 20-day SMA, and this is still the top 100 stocks. 50 uh, 50 percent. Look at the 500 S uh, S and P, and we're only at about 40, you know, 35 percent. 500 stocks above the 100, we're sitting at about 47, 50 percent. I like the 20 day the most. I feel it gives me a good pulse. That's uh, 40 percent there for S and P 500. So still got some work to do, and you can tell in the past, like July 19th. Where is that? That was another peak that we had when we were really cooking across the S&P 500. We had roughly 80, 90 percent of the stocks above their 20 day. And that's when we really have a nice trend. So when we're down here, that's typically when we are at lows. It's not perfect, but it's a little bit kind of like an RSI. <laughs> but please don't long spy every time it's down here. So. Uh, on that note, I think that pretty much concludes the review. I'm trying to keep it, uh, trying to keep it quick. So I hope you survived this week. Hopefully you found some good trades, or you decided to walk away. And another day where I think the trend indicator here on MIT is really proving its usefulness, and even Mercy showing the 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 often flipping from green to red to green to red to green to red, never really breaking either side. And the average mostly staying flat is another great indication of uh, chop <laughs> BS and all this divergence down here. Uh, almost nothing showing you that SPY is in lock with the market and it's just straight garbage. <laughs> so hope you have a wonderful weekend. Appreciate you watching. I'm, I'm going to put out a uh, community post and just ask what you like about these videos and what you don't like. Uh, I want to trim these down if people aren't finding value out of certain things or if they want something different, that's fine too. So uh, if you would, leave a comment and let me know what you like what you don't like. Uh, same thing with the the Twitter posts or X posts now. If you like them, if you don't like them, if there's something else uh, you find valuable, uh, just drop a comment uh, to the same effect. And uh, yeah, as always, thanks for watching and happy trading. See you next week.